Okay, you guys, I decided to make this video on uh, resolution by diastereum eric salts. And besides just learning it for your exam, because it may show up, I think it's pretty interesting. I hope you will appreciate it as well. Um, also, just in general, it's about learning about uh, a process that you do to accomplish something. And I found this kind of thing showing up a lot, like, for example, for you guys in biology, uh, whenever you're learning about uh, an action potential in a neuron, it's like you're just learning multiple steps that happen to make something occur. And this is like a similar thing where you're taking steps, and it really helps if you can make sense of each step, and that's what we're going to try and do here. All right, so we're going to start with uh, this racemic mixture of this compound right here. Okay, so what that means is we've got 50% of the two enantiomers. So let's draw those real quick. Okay, so there's the first one. We've got 50% of that. And then uh, here's the second one. So I just need to make sure I switch this stereo center. So now the hydrogen's there and the methyl group's back here. Okay, 50% of that. All right, now what do we want to do? Uh, we want to separate the two enantiomers, okay? But that's not necessarily easy because we know the following facts. First, enantiomers have identical physical properties. So what that means is we can't just separate them. There's no physical means you can use to separate them. All right. But obviously we're going to have a way around that or else I wouldn't be making the video. So that's where fact two comes in. Diastereomers have different physical properties. Okay, so we can separate them. So physical properties, that just means things like melting point or solubilities. Solubility would be a big one here. That's how you might use, uh, might try to separate things. Okay, so now that we know that, uh, what are we going to do? We want to take our enantiomers and see if we can form two diastereomers from them and then try to separate them. All right, so how we're going to do that is we need to add something a kind of like another piece into uh, the whole process that will link onto both of the enantiomers and make them into diastereomers. So what we're going to use right now, uh, and you'll you'll get a better idea of how I'm choosing this in a second, but we're going to use this amine. And the important part is that the amine itself has a stereocenter. Okay, and we're only using one enantiomer of the amine. Okay, so even though it's chiral, we're just using one of them. All right, so whenever we add that, uh, what's going to happen? We know that carboxylic acids, which is what we've got up here, are pretty acidic. It's like pKa about 5, whereas uh, the conjugate acid of the amine has a pKa around 9, which means the carboxylic acid's more acidic, and it's going to donate the proton to the amine. So we can draw that, grabbing the proton. The electrons go there. And what do we form? With the first one, we're going to now lose the proton. Everything else stays the same. OK. And then the amine now has an extra proton. So it's really an ammonium ion, okay? It's positively charged. And it has this stereochemistry, just as before. Okay, so we form that whenever the uh, amine reacts with the first enantiomer. But then, if it does the same thing with the second one, let's see, so it's going to grab the proton, just like before we get this guy, okay, whoops, so that's not quite right, I need to make sure this is an O minus, sorry about that, okay, there we go. And over here, 
just as before, we have this compound. Okay. So, in solution, the two salts will always be separate. All right, everything's dissolved. But if we crystallize them, um, these will stick together and these will stick together. Okay. Now, the key idea here is, since we've linked the two, now they act as one thing, and this and this are diastereomers, okay? So we've got two diastereomers. Okay, I know that because uh, this has one stereochemistry, and this spot has a different one. Maybe I should sh show that. So those two are different. Whereas this stereocenter is the same on both of the two structures. Okay, so they differ in one spot but are sa the same in the other. So you should know by now that makes them diastereomers. Okay, and now we go back to fact two. Fact two says they have different properties, so we can separate them. Okay, so let's do that. Um, I'm going to move all this up here. Okay, let's keep going. Um, so they're now easy to separate. That was our second fact. Okay, so separate. All right, that just means maybe the one on the left is more soluble in, um, than the one on the right. So if we try to crystallize them, the right one will form crystals more. Uh, maybe you don't really need to know too well how that might happen. That would be something for lab, but the idea is they can be separated now that they're diastereomers. Okay, so now we can get just the one on the left alone, and then the one on the right alone too. So they're still going to be combined with the amine. But the point is, I just have this version, not the other one, okay? That's going to be over here in another spot. But I'm just going to focus on the one on the left to show you the whole process. Okay, so now we have just the enantiomer we wanted, and we just need to s somehow get rid of the, uh, um, the amine part, all right, to get just back to what we wanted. All right, so how am I going to do that? I'm just going to add some acid to protonate the carboxylic acid. So we need something more acidic than the carboxylic acid. Well, that's not too hard. Let's just take a strong acid like HCl. That's going to protonate the carboxylic acid. So we get this plus the new proton from the HCl. And then with that, we're going to have uh, the NH3 plus part. Oh, this should have been a hydrogen, and that was a hydrogen. Okay. All right, so now we have the two different versions. Now, just to be clear, this would also have the Cl minus linked with it. Okay, and now these are clearly two different compounds. This one and this one are definitely different. So they should be easily uh, separated. So I can just use some method to separate them and end up just with the final compound. Okay, and now we have a single enantiomer all by itself. And uh, I'm not going to show, go through the, all the steps for the other one, but the steps would be identical. Back when I had two diastereomers, I would then just repeat the process over on this side. Okay, so the key idea was we started with two enantiomers. Uh, we added an amine and created these diastereomeric salts. Okay, and then they have different properties so we can easily separate them, and then we just have to retrieve the original enantiomer, and that's all the steps we used to get there. So I'd recommend uh, making sure you understood each step. Just start back at the beginning 
with the racemic mixture and see if you can repeat the whole process on your own.